Good evening, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. It's really great to be here tonight at uh, Black Curtain Studios, uh, performing with Mr. Excitement, Sebastian, and his very talented friends. Some of you know me a little bit. You know that I'm uh, just starting off in show business, but I really could use your help. You know, if you're Protestant, you could say a prayer for me. If you're Catholic, light a candle for me. If you're Jewish, one of your relatives owns a nightclub. Put in a good word for me. <laughs> I was determined that this year, 2018, I was going to quit all of my bad habits, all of them. Then I realized, nobody likes a quitter, right? <laughs> I did start a new three-step diet this year. The very first step was get rid of all that bad food. It was delicious. President Trump decided one day to go for a short walk, so he left the White House accompanied by three Secret Service agents. No sooner did he hit the sidewalk, but an assassin jumped out from behind the tree and aimed a gun right at him. Immediately, a Secret Service agent yelled, Mickey Mouse! <laughs> it confused the assassin just momentarily, long enough to ha have him get captured. And then the president looked at the Secret Service agent. He says, boy, you saved my life. He says, but why did you yell Mickey Mouse? He said, well, I was really nervous. I meant to say, Donald, duck. <laughs> yeah, I was out. Uh, Everybody know the French Valley Airport over there, that little airport? Yeah. Well, I was out driving over there the other day. I saw this little restaurant and it had a sign out that said, Home Style Breakfast. So I went in. Sure enough, the waitress came out with a bathrobe and slippers. <laughs> she brought me burnt toast, lukewarm coffee, and a Pop-Tart. <laughs> I was out in the middle of the lake out there in a boat with my uh, banker Jewish friend, Morty. And I'll, the boat started to sink, and Modi looked at me and says, Patrick, you know I don't swim so well. I said, Modi, don't worry. In high school, I had a life-saving course. I'll, I'll try to pull you to shore. So I'm pulling Modi to shore. After 20 minutes, I'm kind of tired, but I kept pulling Modi because he's my good friend. I get 50 feet away from shore, and I am exhausted, folks. So I stopped, I looked at Modi. I said, Modi, we're 50 feet from shore. I said, I'm exhausted. Did you suppose you could float alone? He goes, Patrick, has you picked a hell of a time to ask for money? <laughs> so we had the grandkids over uh, a few weeks ago, and they were just with us for a couple of days, but my little grandson was playing outside with other kids, and he came inside. He says, Papa, he said, what do they call that when two people have to share the same bedroom, one's on top of the other one? I thought, wow, that's pretty mature question, I looked at him and I said, well, it, it's called, I'm going to be honest with him, I said, it's called sexual intercourse. He said, thanks, Papa. He went outside. He came, ba he came back in 15 minutes later, and he was mad at me. He said, they don't call it sexual intercourse, Papa. It's called bunk beds. <laughs> He said, and Jimmy's mother wants to have a talk with you. <laughs> I was uh, walking over by the mall the other day, and I was walking behind this blind man, and he had a service dog with him. The service dog stopped, and he wet on the guy's leg. The guy reached down, and he's patting the dog in the head. I walked up. I said, I saw what happened. I, what are you patting the dog in the head for? He just went on your leg. He said, well, I got to find his head before I can kick his behind. <laughs> so many years ago, I had a guy one time knock on my door, and I answered. And I said, can I help you? He says, yes, I'm uh, doing market research for the company that makes Vaseline. Can I ask if you use our product? I said, yeah, my wife and I use it when we make love. He was kind of shocked. He said, well, I admire your honesty, but can you tell me exactly how you use it? I said, sure, we rub it on the outside doorknob so the kids can't get in. <laughs> Think about it. 
Yeah, I was talking to my pastor last week. He said to me, Patrick, at your age, you know, you really should start thinking a little more about the hereafter. I said, Pastor, I think about it many times every day. He said, that's very wise. I said, well, it has nothing to do with wisdom. I said, every time I walk in a room, open a drawer, or open a closet, I wonder, what the hell am I here after? <laughs> yeah, I got, got on an airplane one time, and I, I had a window seat, so I sat down. A couple of minutes later, this huge, burly, really mean-looking guy sat down next to me in the middle seat. He immediately fell asleep, and the plane took off, and I was feeling kind of queasy, but I didn't want to wake this guy, go to the bathroom, and I couldn't climb over him, so I thought, I'll just tough it out, you know? So right then, the airplane hits a 10-foot air pocket, and I feel this wave of nausea sweep through me, and I hurl all over the front of this poor guy. Five minutes later, he wakes up, he looks down, he sees all the vomit. I looked over at him, and I said, so, do you feel any better now? <laughs> Yeah, three friends of mine were in court one day, and they were there for drunken disorderly in a public park. So the judge looks at the first guy, and he says, well, what were you doing? He said, Your Honor, I was throwing peanuts in the pond. The judge looks at the second guy and says, what were you doing? He says, I was throwing peanuts in the pond, too. So the judge says, well, that sounds pretty harmless. He looks at the third guy, were you throwing peanuts in the pond, too? He says, no, Your Honor, I am peanuts. <laughs> So a friend of mine owned a dairy farm, and he got a new bull, paid a lot of money for a prize bull. And he called me, and he says, you know, that bull just lays on the ground. He won't even look at the cows. I said, well, go see the vet. I'm sure he can give him something. So two days later, he called me. He says, you were right. He says, I got these pills from the vet. I gave them to the bull. That bull jumped up. He serviced every cow on my farm. He said, then he broke through the fence of my neighbor and serviced every cow over there. He said, that bull's a machine. I said, wow. I said, well. What did you give him? He said, I don't know, but it was peppermint tasting. <laughs> so <laughs> this drunk guy comes in a bar and staggers in. He walks up to the bartender. He says, I, I, I want a drink. The bartender says, man, you've had too much already. Get out of here. So he leaves. He's kind of angry. Five minutes later, he staggers in the side door, walks up to the bartender. Bartender, I, I want a drink. Bartender says, man, I told you, you you've had too much to drink already. Get out of here. Five minutes later, he staggers in the back door, walks up to the bartender. Bartender, I want a drink. Bartender had had it by that time. He says, look, I've told you, I told you, you're not getting serviced here. You're inebriated. Get out of here. He looks at the bartender, and he goes, Jeez, how many bars do you work in? <laughs> so <laughs> these two old, uh, old redneck guys, hillbilly boys, they meet on a dusty country road, and one of them is carrying a bag marked chickens. The other guy looks at him and he goes, Hey, if I can guess how many chickens you got in that there bag, would you give me one? The other guy goes, I'd do better than that. If you can guess how many chickens I got in this here bag, I'll give you both of them. <laughs> the guy scratches his head and he goes, is it five? <laughs> yeah, I was uh, out in the boat fishing and drinking. No, it wasn't with uh, my older friend. It was with Charlie. Charlie could swim. But we were fishing and drinking. Well, we were <laughs> really mostly drinking. So after a few beers, Charlie says to me, he says, you know, Patrick, he goes, I think I'm going to divorce my wife. She hasn't talked to me in three months. I took a sip of beer, and I said, you know, Charlie, you might want to rethink that. Good women like that are hard to find. <laughs> So the next week, Charlie and I went hunting. We're out in the traips and through the woods. It starts to get dark, and all of a sudden, Charlie goes, Stop! Hold it right there! I, went, I looked down. 
Four inches away from this huge hole, at least five foot across, Charlie spits down the hole. He can't hear a hit bottom. He goes, I wonder how deep that hole is. I said, well, get something to throw in it. He comes back with a concrete block and he shoves it over the edge and we're trying to hear it hit bottom and all of a sudden this goat comes running by us at full speed and he jumps in the hole. I said, Charlie, let's get out of here. This place is spooky. So we turned around, we start to get out of the woods and a farmer stops us. He goes, hey, hunters, have you guys seen my goat? I said, yeah, he came roaring by us as fast as he could run and he jumped in a big hole back there. The farmer says, that's impossible. I had him tied to a concrete block. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I had a, a blonde friend of mine. She wanted to work for the police department, so she went down to the police department. The captain looked at her, and he says, uh, I don't really want to hire her, but I'm going to ask her a few questions. It'll be like a fake interview. So he said to her, how much is two plus two? She says, four. He thinks, wow, well, let's make it a little harder. What's the square root of 100? She goes, 10. He thinks, boy. Let me switch over to history. He says, who killed Abraham Lincoln? She goes, hmm, I don't know that one. He goes, why don't you go home and work on it? When you figure it out, you come back and let me know. He figures that's the last he's going to see of her, right? She gets home. She calls a friend. Her friend says, did you get the job? She goes, not only did I get the job, they've already assigned me to a murder case. <laughs> Yeah, my ex-wife, she was blonde, and uh, she said to me one time, she goes, you know, baby, I'm like a fine wine. I get better with age. So I locked her in the cellar. <laughs> Another blonde friend of mine, she wanted to wallpaper her master bedroom. She didn't know how many rolls to get, so she remembered her blonde friend Buffy next door had wallpapered her master bedroom, and she had the same house layout. So she went and asked her, Buffy, how many rolls of wallpaper did you get to ma for your master bedroom? She goes, I got 10. So she got 10 rolls. She finished the job. She had two rolls left over. She went back to Buffy. She goes, Buffy, I got 10 rolls. I finished the job. I have two rolls left over. Buffy says, yeah, so did I. <laughs> Anybody out there from uh, North Dakota? Anybody ever been to North Dakota? Can anybody spell North Dakota? Does anybody know that state above South Dakota? All right, we got that figured out. I will tell you, it gets really, really cold there in the winter. And one particularly frigid day, a state trooper's driving down the highway, he sees a motorcycle stalled over on the side, so he pulls over, he stops, he walks up. The biker's wearing bulky, heavy winter clothing from head to foot, a full helmet, a full face thing, to protect from the uh, cold. So the trooper looks at him and he goes, what's the problem? The biker says, frozen carburetor. He goes, well, pee on it. The biker says, I can't. He goes, let me show you. He unzips, he proceeds to warm up the carburetor the way he said. Biker gets on the bike, starts up, he takes off, waves to the trooper. Three days later, the trooper's office gets a thank you letter from the father of the biker. It starts off, on behalf of my daughter, Jill. <laughs> North Dakota. So I, I was on a business trip one time, and I wanted to take something home for my wife. So I went in a perfume store. The lady brings me out a bottle. She goes, sir, this is $100. I said, that's a little pricey for me. So she brings out another bottle. She goes, sir, this one's $50. I said, that's still a little high. So she's <laughs> a little annoyed with me, but she brings out another bottle for $30. I said, I don't think you understand. I said, I want something nice, but I want to see something really cheap. That's when she handed me the mirror. <laughs> I don't know if uh, 
if you guys heard about this story, but uh, in London, every 45 seconds, somebody gets stabbed. I feel sorry for that person, don't you? <laughs> there was a police recruit who was taking this final test, and they asked him the following question. They said, what would you do if you had to arrest your own mother without batting an eyelash? She said, I'd call for backup. You know, I remember when I was in like uh, grade school, junior high, those were good days. And I remember one day I was out on a playground with two other guys and we were bragging about our fathers. The first kid says, my dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper, he calls it a poem and they give him $50. Second kid says, well that's nothing. My dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper, he calls it a song, they give him $100. Not to be outdone, I said, my dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper. He calls it a sermon and it takes eight people to collect all the money. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. So I really did. I loved, you know, being a kid and going to church. You hear those beautiful stories about how God made everything, including all of us. In particular, I like the story about when he took one of Adam's ribs and he made a wife Eve for Adam. Later that week, I wasn't feeling too well, so I laid down on my bed. My mom came in and she goes, son, uh, are you okay? Do, do you feel okay? I said, no, mom, I, I got a pain in my side. I, I think I'm gonna have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a few years ago, uh, Carol and I went down to see our attorney be because we had retirement concerns, you know, how are we going to do that? So he looked at me and he said, you know, Patrick, he says, I read over all your retirement plans and he says, I have some recommendations for you. He says, but first of all, I have two questions for you. Which one's going to wear the mask and which one's going to drive the getaway car? <laughs> yeah, I had another friend of mine, she was a journalist and she got assigned to the uh, bureau over in Israel where the whaling wall is. And uh, I think it's Jerusalem Bureau. And uh, so she went over there. She got an apartment overlooking the Wailing Wall. And every day she'd see this frail little old Jewish man come out and he would pray in the morning. Then he'd come back in the afternoon and he'd pray. She's kind of intrigued. So the next morning she goes down, introduces herself. She says, I see you every day. She goes, how long have you been doing this and what do you pray for? He goes, well. I've not missed a day for 25 years I come to pray. In the morning, I pray for world peace. In the afternoon after lunch, I come back. I pray for the eradication of disease from the face of the earth. She says, well, my goodness. She goes, how does it make you feel doing that so long, praying for that stuff? He goes, well, sometimes I feel like I'm talking to a wall. <laughs> So these three ladies, they decide they want to spice up their sex life. So they said, okay, let's wear black lingerie, stiletto heels, and a black mask the next time we make love to our respective partners. Well, one of them has a, has a girlfriend, one's engaged, and one's married. A week later, they get together to discuss the results. The girlfriend says, well, my boyfriend came through the front door. He took one look at me in those black lingerie, the auto heels and the black mask and he said you're the girl of my dreams we made love all night long so the fiance says my fiance came through the door he took one look at me in the black lingerie the stiletto heels and the black mask he didn't say a word he just grabbed me we made love for three hours the married lady says you see it coming don't you <laughs> yeah the married lady says well first thing I did I sent my kids over to stay at mom's for the night then my husband walked in the door. He took one look at me in the black lingerie, the stiletto heels, and the black mask, and he goes, hey, what's for dinner, Batman? <laughs> you know, the last time I was here performing, after my performance, a lady said to me, Patrick, the jokes you told were the funniest jokes I've ever heard in my life. She goes, and your timing for every joke was perfect, and your stage presence was magnificent, electrifying. She goes, seriously, you were the greatest. I said, thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, my father, my father was a man of few words. He always used to say to me, son, My sister had to go to jail one time. She did not take it lightly, folks. She refused to eat or drink. She spit and swore at everybody and threw things everywhere. I'm never playing Monopoly with her again. <laughs> i tell you, seriously, folks, I have not always been this handsome man you see up here right now. As a child and a baby, I was so ugly. How ugly were you? I was so ugly, my dad carried around the picture of the kid that came with his wallet. <laughs> my mother had morning sickness after I was born. <laughs> the delivery doctor came out and saw my parents. He goes, I'm sorry, we did everything we could, but he still pulled through. <laughs> he wanted to get me breathing, so he held me up by the feet and spanked me real hard on the fanny. I think while he held me up, the nurses got on a few hits, too. I felt like a Mexican pinata. The only colors I remember were black and blue. <laughs> I really don't think my parents liked me, seriously. My bath toys as a child were a radio and a toaster. <laughs> plugged in. I had to be very careful with my water play, believe me. They bought me a baby buggy, no brakes. I hated living on top of the hill. <laughs> One time I was kidnapped. They cut off my finger and sent it to my dad. He sent it back. He said, I want more proof. <laughs> <laughs> I came home from school one day in the second grade only to find out my parents had moved that day. <laughs> I found a policeman. I said, sir, can you help me find my parents? He goes, I don't know, kid. There's a lot of places they could hide. Hey, this has been a real treat. I, I enjoyed it so much, and I hope I brought some laughter into your lives. Thank you so much, guys. Oh,